Welcome to Tesla Field Physics. Today is a very significant day. Today is November 5th, 2024. Today the United States is holding their presidential elections in which Donald J. Trump is running. This is highly significant because nothing is by chance or coincidence. Everything is only consciousness. What I'm talking about is in the movie Back to the Future from 1985, 1955, November 5th is supposedly the day that Doc Brown invented time travel. This is highly significant because Donald Trump was always talking about the message or the MSG. And I'm showing everybody how the real message is the zero point, the free energy. It's faster than light, travel and communications and is dealing with this whole cold fusion thing that they were trying to figure out back in the 80s at a high level. So supposedly the story goes between 1984, 85 time frame, somewhere in there, they were trying to produce cold fusion and this one group had a device that when they started it, it got uh, cold and basically went into a reverse meltdown situation to where it went right through the floor. It was four inch concrete and this thing bored a, bored a hole in the floor. And you're gonna see all this weird symbolism in this movie because they're wearing all these bio suits with this um, whole uh, radioactive nuclear um, symbology to it so it's all dealing with zero point because the nuclear um, is the complete opposite of the zero point energy the zero point is cold to where the nuclear is hot so it's cold fusion with the zero point and hot fusion dealing with the nuclear so they're two opposite ends of the spectrum so to speak so what you see here is my magnetic diamond and it works like this. All the magnetism is on the outside that you see here. In the center of this thing, there's no magnetism, there's no time because it's dielectricity. It's faster than light, that's the zero point. That's where everything's emanating from. And in the movie, that's the doctor's name, Emmett Brown. But when you get into the whole thing, they're trying to um, they're trying to cover up their source where they got everything from, and that's what Einstein did, and that's what the winners of wars do. They rewrite history and they take the credit for themselves. But I give all the credit to Nikola Tesla, and that's who I do all my stuff for. So all this is highly significant because. When they're talking about um, Doc Brown, they're really talking about T.T. Brown, who was doing all these anti-gravity research experiments at the same time. And Donald Trump's uncle, John G. Trump, was also a scientist working in electrostatics out of MIT, later doing high voltage um, they're all working on basically the same stuff because John G. Trump got a hold of all Tesla stuff uh, in 1943 when Tesla died. And he was in charge of trying to basically figure out stuff for the death ray and not let any of, anybody else get that. That was the, the whole um, biggest security thing was not to let anybody get the death ray technology. So he developed all these things that he could find out of Tesla's work that Tesla either had gone or that they could develop further. 
And that's where you're going to see this whole DARPA project Pegasus time travel thing come into the deal. Because supposedly, according to Andrew Bishago, his father, Raymond Bishago, was working on this stuff. He was working originally at Thomas A. Edison Labs. And then got into all these um, time travel projects involving high um, people up in the government. So um, the movie's actually kind of based on Bushago and what he's talking about with all his stories. So the whole deal is that they're trying to do everything to go around Tesla and not give him any credit and not even say his name because they know if they even say his name, everybody's going to figure out this right here, the zero point, the free energy. And they don't want that. But in the movie, they're showing you everything. Okay, all the stuff Tom Bearden was talking about right in that same time frame back in 1985. They're showing you the cold fusion that's taking place when the DeLorean jumps time and it comes back and the thing's frozen. It's got ice on it. They're showing you this whole thing um, that the DeLorean is made out of stainless steel and um, that it's superconducting. So they're showing you all this stuff right in the open. Um, so I'm gonna show you some uh, things from the movie that are showing you this pre-predictive programming aspect to it. And then I'm probably gonna do another video where I run through all the stuff that when I went through the movie here a few days ago, and started looking at it again, I noticed all these things that they're showing you right in the open, some not, some kind of off in the background, but it's in there. So it's deep, so this might be a couple of uh, different videos on this. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. This is wild, and I'm part of it too. Because my name is Michael J. Talaski. Kind of like Michael J. Fox. And uh, my uncle, when he was in high school, that was his name, the Fox. That's what they called him in football. So here's the Fox sticker I got on my trailer. Because um, ever since I was riding dirt bikes in the beginning, I always had Fox clothing that I wore. So it's just always been around me. Fox is 666, but I flipped the whole thing because I'm 999. So then there you see my trailer's a tractor supply trailer. And uh, that's what we supply here in Roger City or the other Rocket City. Um, we're supplying them tractor beams all these defense contractors running around here so the movie back to the future is highly significant and like i said it's basically based on this guy right here this is andrew bishago andrew bishago is the whistleblower from project pegasus a program he was involved in when he was a kid they were doing time travel jumping forward and backward in time and they were basically telling people, like future presidents and stuff beforehand, that they were going to be president and they were telling them basically their fate. So this stuff gets very interesting. Here's an interview of Bushago talking to Kerry Cassidy. some other 
so there's Bashago talking about Project Pegasus, the DARPA um, Defense Advanced Research Agency time travel um, that they had going. So his father, Raymond F. Bashago, was involved in this program, and that's how he got um, his son Andrew involved. So he worked at this uh, Thomas A. Edison research laboratories and before that he was developing the ramjet engine so he was already in the mix he brought andrew in and then andrew started jumping and that's where he says that they were telling people like george bush like bill clinton like barack obama that they were going to be president in the future so they are already um telling these people what was going on and I think that's how I got into this whole thing with what I'm doing right now is they figured out that I was going to do this in the future with this whole free energy thing and Tesla um that that's why all this is happening right now and you're seeing all this stuff come out and how I figured out all this stuff is because I was supposed to so if you look at the opening of the movie here, um, it's put out by Universal. Now it's just like I was showing you with my magnetic diamond. You're just doing the same exact thing. Okay. Um, here's the earth and then you see the magnetic field on the outside. But at the dead center of the earth, there's no magnetism. It's just dielectricity. There's no time there either. It's faster than light. It's the dielectric and that's where everything's coming from so they're showing you all this stuff so if you take and switch the word universal with catholic it's the same thing so catholic just means universal And they're, um, the catholic church is just putting their stamp on this whole thing because they're the first ones that had the technology, meaning they had two priests that come up with this thing called the chronovisor, which could see uh, forward and backward in time, and that's what they were originally using before they um, started doing all the stuff with the uh, Tesla teleportation equipment that Nikola Tesla had, and that they didn't know what it was, but um, Andrew Bishago's father was part of the team that figured out that it was a Tesla teleporter and it was um, being used to jump time. So here's Michael J, just like me, standing in front of this big wall of sound, this big speaker. It's just like I've shown you um, with the magnet everything's right at the dead center and they're showing you here how powerful sound is that's what Ed Leeds Kellen says is the base of everything is sound and that's my favorite is the base so um, what he's gonna do here he's just turning this whole big stereo system all the way up and He's about to strum his first couple notes on it, and uh, he's got it turned up so loud that the speaker, all the power from the speaker, blows him backwards. So, um, it's basically not the lightning, it's the thunder. And that's how this whole thing's working. It's not, um, it's not the high end, it's on the low end. Okay, so... Um, he's standing in front of this big wall of sound. And it's very interesting because um, when I got into this whole thing, I typed just the name Talaski, that's my last name, onto the internet. And it turns out that uh, this guy I'm related to in Chicago area, he's got this whole thing called the Talaski Group. And that's what they do is it's all dealing with sound they install all these uh sound systems in these big like theaters and big commercial buildings and stuff um and that's what they do 
So I thought that was pretty cool. So here's Marty McFly, Michael J. And uh, he's got the diamond. You see the pick, it's shaped like a diamond, a triangle, pyramid. That's the whole geometry thing. So he's doing the same thing that I did. I put the diamond into the field with my magnetic diamond. And that's when all the stuff started. Okay, so fast forward in the movie. I'm gonna cover all this other stuff, but I'm gonna show you where this whole thing gets weird because this is dealing with the Mandela effect. Now supposedly, 1955 is when they started CERN. And that's when we started noticing all these weird changes um, with all these brand logos and um, everything just basically switched up with the Mandela effect once people started noticing it was happening. So, Doc Brown in the movie, T.T. Brown, kind of like uh, T.T. for Twin Towers. He's um, always worried about the future and not being told information um, when Marty tries to tell him what's going to go on in the future. And he tries giving him this letter at the end to um, prevent Doc Brown's death at the end because he knows what's gonna happen. So what Bashago was saying in Project Pegasus, um, like in the early 70s or whatever, he was saying that they were going and getting information and bringing it back. So they were doing time jumps, going to the future and then going back to the 70s. And their main focus was basically um, 911 and what happened that day. So, um, that's the whole deal with the dial 911 and the emergency hotline. It was all pre predictive programming to get that stuff in your head. Okay, so here you see. Marty, when he just arrived back from um, the past, from 1955, stuff starts changing. And this was what Doc Brown was worried about. But their characters aren't paying attention to it in the movie. So I just want to point this out. If you, you might not be able to see it real good, but this is a six-pointed star here. Just like my Tesla fuel physics, my six pyramids. This is a five-pointed star right next to it. Okay, so there you're dealing with the whole 555 five, five thing. Um, okay. Right from off the jump, they're showing you this picture. Does this look like anything that you'd recognize as the Twin Towers? See, you got the number five right there, like I was showing you. Kind of looks like a building to me there, and it kind of looks like another one right there. They're trying to put all this stuff in your subconscious. Because like I said, they knew about it, and they were very careful. Um, almost like they had to let it happen or something, I don't know. I still haven't figured the whole thing out. So here's another shot. Kind of looks like the Trade Center Towers. Okay, so when Marty's about to uh, to make this jump, this is what I need to point out here is this is a nine. It's hanging off the side of this building. So when Marty goes flying by here in the DeLorean trying to hit 88 miles an hour, he goes past this nine. Well, the nine is symbolic of the zero point and all this stuff. Uh, that's my number. That's where my watch sits at all the time. It doesn't have a battery in it. My watch stays at nine because I'm the nine. So here's the DeLorean taking off, going down the street, and you see that thing right there. Okay. And then here's Doc Brown. And here's a tower on fire. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
and then you see the um, the two lines of fire or the two pillars of fire or the two towers of fire on the ground from the DeLorean when it just exited in 1955. Okay, it's highly significant because here you see the nine and then you see the one one. Well, what's nine one one? It's the emergency hotline. Okay, here's where it gets really interesting. You might not be able to see it real good, but that blue beam right there, there's four separate beams. Okay. The sign here says town, kind of like T.T. Brown, Thomas Townsend Brown. Okay. When the beam is going through here, now it just says own. Like they own this building, or they own that directed energy weapon. Okay, because those towers didn't just crumble on their own like that. And it wasn't from the fire. So there you're seeing this whole thing play out, where they're showing you in your subconscious, there's the tower on fire, this whole deal, the 911. For that day in September and then you see the emergency hotline get it it's hot it's on fire okay kind of like them airliners remember they were stolen they were hot okay by some Middle Easterners okay so here's Doc Brown or TT Brown Thomas Townsend because remember I showed you the sign with the town on it, Thomas Townsend Brown, but this is also representing Tesla because that's the source. That's what they're trying to cover up, who it came from. Okay, here, there you see the blue beam or the directed energy weapon, the DEW, the DO, the MT, DO, the Mountain DO. Okay, then right after the lightning strikes and the DeLorean jumps time, you see this helicopter come out of nowhere because this is what they're showing you they're showing you all the stuff that's in operation all the black ops stuff okay because these guys showed up right there like they knew that something was going to happen this is where it gets really interesting too okay you see this bomb laying on this bench and then you see this sign right here that says raise well when you raise a building, that means you take it to the ground. Okay, here's your um, as above, so below. It says raise, that would be up. Then you got a bum knocked down to the ground, that would be below. But uh, that's what the word raise means. It means to take a building down one of the towers, okay? All for your subconscious to absorb. This one's gonna blow your mind. What does that look like uh, right there? That looks like an airplane, doesn't it? And if you look at how the building is like laid out and built out in the street, it just looks all funny. Like it's gonna be like that. So that's highly significant, put there very specifically for a reason. Because here's your blue beam, and this would be your tower. There's your vehicle running into your tower. There's your big hole that you would see in the tower with the smoke coming out of the tower or out of the Pentagon. Because here's either a plane or it could be a missile too. So, um, that's what's going on. And like I said, there's the town, Townsend Brown. And here's your directed energy into the building. So they're putting all this stuff into your subconscious. And that plane, it's, it's on the ground. I mean, obviously it crashed. This is also interesting too. Um, 
if you watch this movie, notice the amount of times that they say uh, the word uh, JC. They say the word JC quite a bit in this um, movie. Um, and that's who Trump represents, okay? If you, um, you can't see this sign probably on my computer, but it's, I'm going to tell you what it says. It says, Assembly of Christ, okay? What happens if you shorten up the word assembly? Then you just got ass of Christ, okay? What you can't see here either is the word, it says, Reverend John Crump, okay? It says Crump, almost like Trump, and Trump's got the towers, right? Trump Towers, okay, John Trump, John G. Trump, can you see what I'm saying? They're putting all this stuff right in your face, okay, and when the DeLorean, when the DeLorean comes back, it's full of ice because the thing's doing cold fusion, it ain't hot fusion, that's the whole deal with everything, that's the zero point energy. It's, the, it's, um, it's super conducting, so that's why it's cold. Like I said, there you see the word town right there. T. Towns, T. Towns and Brown. But it's really Nikola Tesla. That's the whole thing. It's really Nikola Tesla. That's the source. That's what they don't want you to figure out. Telling you, look at it from that angle. Not by coincidence. Okay, this is the Mandela effect of the movie part. When I started noticing this, I, I just couldn't believe it. Um, the movie starts out there talking about this place used to be called Twin Pines because. The guy um, that owned it wanted to uh, breed pine trees or something like that. That's what they were saying. So look again. This thing's down on its side. Uh, before it was called twin. Now it's down to one. Because that's what the whole thing is. Is they just want the Empire State Building. The Empire State is the Roman Empire. Okay. And that's the whole ruined deal. Okay. Catholic Church. Vatican. All that. So. Um. This is when Marty gets back to 1985. Everything's changed. And this is what Doc Brown was worried about. And he didn't want to be told anything was going to happen in the future because he thought it might do this. Okay, so now look. Um, 133. So the 33 is highly significant. Um, that's the Masonic stuff. Um, the year, um, that also, that JC supposedly left the Earth. And then you see all the stuff with the Mandela effect, because that's the real deal with J.C. Penney's. Okay, J.C. Penney um, is the deal. So they're showing you all this stuff and how it's changed now that he's back. Okay, so here they're showing you some of the plasma stuff in the cold fusion deal. That I said was going um, on in the country that they were all trying to figure out around this time. So here's the DeLorean, and it just got all its systems going, and it's blasting this beam ahead of it. Okay, and this is how in 1985 Thomas Bearden was talking about um, the time reverse wave worked, and that's the whole thing with the TR3B, and that's what I'm saying. TR3B stands for Time Reverse Wave. Um, this uh, system gets powered up with the DeLorean flux capacitor at 88 miles an hour. So that's what you see this thing doing. It's getting ready to do the jump. So they're showing you how this whole thing works. Okay, and then boom. You see a ball of plasma, okay? Now you're getting into the MH370 stuff 
and the three orbs floating around the 777, just like Trump. He's always got the, 40, the 47, 47, 47, or they say 444 is something like your guardian angels are watching over you or something. So here's the plasma ball, and they did a pretty good recreation of this with their special effects. So they're showing you the free energy. They're showing you the zero point energy and the cold fusion. Um, boom, there's the zap, just like the zap in the MH370. It's a cold uh, implosion, it's not an explosion. So um, all this stuff is going out in all directions. Um, that's how this whole thing's working. It's getting tapping into that zero and that's how they're able to make the jump. So that's the special effects on the wormhole. And then again, you see the um, fire marks. And then you see these guys reminiscing of what happened on that day in September in 01. Okay, these are supposedly Libyans. And look at this view right here. Doesn't it uh, doesn't even really look like a bus there. It kind of looks like a plane, don't it? Like there's these hijackers and they just got a plane and they're going to crash it into a building. And if you look at the building, it's, ace, uh, it's symmetrical on both sides. So there's basically two in one. And it's headed for the building. And then this is highly significant too. Okay, so... Um, in the movie, uh, Marty McFly, Michael J, he gives um, Doc Brown this letter to read um, before he leaves so that Doc Brown will know to show up early so that um, bad stuff don't happen um, from them guys in the van. So he tells him um, this and says, take all precautions, which is highly significant. Because if you think of what just happened this summer with Donald J. Trump and the letter that he was looking at when uh, there was that thing that went down at one of those rallies, uh, somebody from a distance, yeah, that, and he turned his head. This is highly significant of what's um, just been going on. Um, it's unreal. So in this shot here, Marty had just got back in his bed from 1955 and now it's 1985. Uh, so you see the clock and everything's changed. If you could see this Panasonic sign, it's actually flipped inside out on the case. If you look at these numbers here, it looks like 85. Um, but if you look at it, it looks like it says buzz off. If you could see it, it looks like it says buzz off, um, which is funny because maybe they don't want you looking at that and we're figuring this out because I've never ever seen this before. I can't believe it's even in here. So this is the Mandela effect. And like I said, they supposedly started CERN in 1955. Here's the Pepsi can. See, it's flipped and it's going um, on a diagonal. Let's flip Pepsi backwards. So we can get a better shot. And this is also weird too, because when he gets back, look at how he's laying on his bed. It looks like he was tied up and thrown on there. Like kind of by uh, some military operation or something. Because in the movie, they show him doing basically a fake alien abduction type thing. Uh, fake alien invasion. Uh, where he goes into his father's room. And he's got this whole um, hazmat suit on. Which is funny because Trump was wearing the whole safety vest and all this stuff too. And... Uh, Okay, so when he gets back to the future, everything's changed. Biff used to be this jerk, and now he's nice, and he's waxing the car. Well, this is 
tying Ray back to me again. Um, Cause he's got like his, you know, his uh, green outfit on, and he's um, got a can of turtle wax here. So he's um, he's waxing uh, George McFly's car in the future here in '85. So it's highly significant um, because that's what I also do is I detail people's cars, and I'm always waxing. So. Um, he's kind of got his uh, little hip hop stuff going on too because it's all about the message and that's what I am um, I'm a rapper so um, if you look at the sign on his truck it's also flipped backwards too the base auto detailing so I couldn't believe it when I started seeing all this stuff so George McFly then gets this package and it's his new sci-fi book that he wrote and it's funny because it shows up at the house and everybody's excited and they all gather around and they pull the book out and all the words are flipped on it backwards and everybody passes the book around and they don't even notice it because it goes to show you how dumb all the people are they just don't even catch on to all this stuff Okay, and this is the other real weird twist of the whole story. Um, this is this. Back in 1985, I was in first grade. In first grade, I had this biggest crush on this girl. Her name is Jennifer Lewandowski. Okay, in the movie, Michael J., which is my name, Michael J., um, is dating this girl, and her name is Jennifer. Okay. So, I was only in first grade, and this girl was like um, six or seven years older than me. So, you know, I mean, uh, she would basically just uh, let me sit with her or something if I didn't have a place to sit, or she was one of the last stops um, to get on. So sometimes I'd have an open seat, and she'd sit with me. So, I mean, there wasn't any uh, chance of me ever... Um, being with her at the time, but I just had the biggest crush on her. So, fast forward this whole deal, and uh, here you see this. And this is what I'm talking about with the whole Trump McDonald's thing, to where he was serving out the french fries, and then they showed Kamala swatting at this fry, because it's all about McFly. And um, here's basically Tesla's uncle, or Tesla, and then that's a real Tesla right there. That's not a fake Tesla there, Elon. That's the real one that runs on zero point. That's the one they don't want you to have with the antenna sticking up. Yeah. Um, so all this stuff is highly significant because of this. Okay, a few years ago on YouTube, I typed in the word Roger City, Michigan. Roger City, Michigan is where I grew up here. And Jennifer um, Lewandowski and I noticed her last name is Lev, L-E-V. It starts off like that, so like levitation. So it's also another tie-in. Okay, we went to the same high school and... Um, we had the same English teacher whose name's Jim Hop. So he had this journalism class and um, he was all into the conspiracy stuff. Like in the class, we watched JFK and all this stuff. And uh, he was big into the Beatles and he showed us all the stuff in, this, in the lyrics and stuff and how to figure out all these um, angles to put all these pieces together. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing is because the stuff he showed us. So... At the end of English 4, um, half of the semester is basically we had to do a term paper. So you could pick anything you want and just write about it. So I went um, and picked the Titanic. And I wanted to do a conspiracy angle on it. So I figured out all this stuff that would have prevented the Titanic disaster from happening. So at the beginning of it, we went around the class and everybody um, was asked what, they were, um, what their topic was going to be on their term paper. So when it got to me, um, 
I said I was going to do mine on Titanic. The whole class laughed at me. Everybody started laughing. I couldn't figure out. I don't know why. I, I thought it was going to be cool, and it was. So at the end of it, people were like, wow, that was really good. And the teacher, he was really impressed. Um, so that's how I got into this whole thing. So that was in 1997. So fast forward a year later, the movie Titanic comes out. And I don't think anybody was laughing at me after that. So that's just how I've been way ahead of the curve on all this stuff. Okay, so here's on YouTube. When you type in Roger City, um, type in Back to the Future, and you get this pulled up. It's um, Back to the Future in Roger City, Michigan, 1989. So this, um, they did this little skit right before um, part two of Back to the Future was coming out. And, uh, okay, so it's Wednesday, November 22nd, 1989, Roger City, Michigan. Okay, that's Jenny right there. That's the girl I had the crush on in first grade. Okay, Jennifer Lewandowski, L-E-V, just like levitation. So they do this skit, and it's only like a couple minute long uh, deal. I just thought it was the weirdest thing. So here's your Doc Brown character and Marty McFly and Jennifer. So he's putting the stuff in the reactor and they're getting ready to jump in the car and they're going to take off. Okay, here's the credits. See, Jennifer is played by Jennifer Lewandowski. So this whole thing, like I'm telling you, is dealing with me. And here's where they give credit to Jim Hop, um, who died in a car crash. Um, And um, they're saying that um, dedicated to James L. Hop, um, whose passion for all things creative um, has inspired us for decades. And this was another um, one of the other kids uh, that was in his class. So that's the whole deal um, on this pre-predictive programming thing and how I tie into the whole Back to the Future thing. I'm going to go through some more stuff on some more videos because there's a lot to go through that I haven't shown. So if you like this, stay tuned. I got more coming. If you haven't seen my other videos, please check them out. Thanks.